Now we are going to be detecting buttons, levers and pressure plates, or more precisely detecting when they are activated. Um, this is pretty easy if you've got a wall and your buttons on there. Well, we know when it's activated because we can just put a command block on the back. There we go, command block runs. That's pretty simple. What though if we had a wall or just a block floating in the middle and you wanted to put a button on there? How do we detect that? How would we detect the same with a pressure plate? And the same thing with a lever, so we can put the lever there. So we want to detect when these are being activated. Now it's not too hard to do. Let's pop down command block there and it will be always active, repeat and let's look at this block. Let's look at the button, F3. And we can see over on the right side there it's saying powered false. Okay, and we can see that it's at 3157.11. Okay, powered false, 3157.11. Let's, can we use fill to get that? 3157.11, yes. Copy. Now let's put a command in here. We want to execute if the block there is a stone button run any command will run say button found done okay it's just going to stream forever put some text in there off it goes because the button is found now remember we saw that powered true so let's change it from button found to button powered let's go to the stone button and let's put in here powered equals true. Okay, it's, now it's not streaming. It's only going to say it when we press the button. So now we can have a nice floating button somewhere which is activated by this. But we don't we don't have to say hi. We could we could set a command block or, or a we could do a set block, set block, uh, two blocks to the X, okay so now when the button is pressed, boom, we get a redstone block, okay that's pretty cool, let's make another one, in fact We'll copy that one. Let's get the coordinates of this here. Let's look at it first. Again, it's powered false. So we're just going to be checking for powered true. So let's get its coordinates. Tab, tab, tab. Copy. And let's just run off the same line here. And we will execute if the block at those coordinates is a stone pressure plate powered equals true run and let's say done and let's let's copy this run copy okay so if we press the button we get a redstone block there. If we step on the pressure plate, ah, okay, what's happened here? Do we have a mistake? Yes. Now this mistake is very frustrating and hard to find. There's a space at the end. So if we look at the previous output here, that space has messed me up many times. Let's get rid of it. Done. Let's try again. Now we get a block there. That's quite good. Okay, and we'll do one more for this for this lever. Let's uh, let's just copy that block and its command. Always active chain. But we're looking for 
a lever and how many blocks away is it I don't know let's not guess let's just point at it fill tab 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 27 Have we done that right? We'll flick the switch and find out. Yep. Okay, so now we are checking for when any of these are pressed. And when they are pressed, we're getting an output. So we can have a floating lever, floating pressure plates, floating buttons. We can put them anywhere we like, and we can detect the outputs using these command blocks. So we can keep our redstone nice and hidden away if we need to.